What's up, everybody? Steven here with Neural DSP on a, a very interesting Q&A this time. Uh, so as you guys saw, I, I decided that I wanted to try and actually just dial in some creative tips, tricks, and then ask you guys kind of what you wanted to see um, dialed in on the Archetype of Bossy. If any of you saw on the Facebook group, I also decided to uh, display these beauties. So I got a bunch of guitars behind me. So if y'all have a specific request, you want to hear the Abbasi dialed in on single coil, Tele, Strat, whatever else I have behind your eight, eight string, seven string, just put it in the comments and I'll, I'll uh, try and address everybody's, uh, everybody's, everybody's stuff. So how's everybody's week been going? This is, this is interesting. I, usually the Q&A is pretty like chill, um, but this one's... Uh, I feel a bit more more amped than usual because I get to play guitar on stream and it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, so let's get with the chat. Mark Perez says, hi. Hello. How's it going, man? Uh, Ivan Gent, what's up, dude? Carl, how's it going? Uh, Uncle Funkle, hey. Uh, let see. Kuze says, uh, pretty good so far. What about you? In response to saying, how's everybody's week been treating? My week is great. My week is great. Working on some content, doing the live stream, and then I'm actually trying out a couple of new things for this particular stream, adding some new tech and trying to get some new camera angles, as you'll see. Um, but otherwise, things are great. I love it. Um, Roland Lemus, what's up, dude? What's up, Kendall James? How's it going, man? Uh, Kevin Kemper says, very good, thanks. How's it going, dude? Uh, Dorino says, hola. How's it going? Uh, do, 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 do. Jonathan Harbour says, yes, the one I need. Really struggling, dialing in tones on the Abbasi. Also, my week's been all good. Good, man. Jonathan, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, the, the Abbasi seems to elude some people uh, as far as dialing in tones. Um, it's very it's very case-specific, but I think what I'm hoping to do today is sort of like uh, clarify and simplify the, the user input. Like, you know, just like taking those certain things that are going to be going to get you the most like return on investment. I think I described it to somebody the other day as like micro and macro uh, controls. Um, just kind of breaking it down so that way you can have a little bit more versatility and, you know, just be able to to work with it a little bit easier. So hoping to kind of demystify a little bit of that today. Scotty Dog, what's up, dude? Jens, what's up? Let's see. Ali Kitri says, uh, hi, we need a Mark 2C plus exclamation point winky face. We'll see if that happens, man. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let's see. What do we got? Still going through the chat. Do Nice. Stuart says, picked up the Abbasi plugin yesterday. So versatile. These flash sales are killing me. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, I mean... You can't you can't resist with a fifty percent off sale, right? Like, they're they're great as is at the at the usual price, but getting a fifty percent off that's that's kind of uh, it's temptation right there. Let's see. Let's see. Roland Lemus also just bought the Abasi. He says he loves it, but he wants to get more. Cool. John Memos, what's up, dude? Good to see you, man. Riff and Destroy says beauty hair. I don't know what that's in, in reference to. My hair? My hair might be pretty. I don't know. Wow, am I really pale? I'm looking at the I'm looking at the playback. Am I really like this seems really bright. I don't know. Let me know. Um I mean I am pretty pale. Like that <laughs> that's that that goes without saying. I am I'm inside all day long, every day. So yeah, but uh, if the lights are too bright, let me know. Any tips for heavy tones with the telly? That's a question from Stuart Glenn. Um, yeah, I can get into the telly for sure. Um, it's tuned to, I believe, C sharp standard currently. Um, and it's just a stock like Fender Squire telly. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and, and prop that one up real quick. Um, Let's see. All right. I got I got a lot of people, a lot of people chatting. Alex Forrest, what's up, dude? Yeah, David Durden says, uh, I like the Abbasi plugin, but I can't find a suitable metal setting and the presets don't satisfy me very much. Uh, got any tips? I got lots of tips. 
um, and I will definitely get into them. It kind of depends on the um, the style that you want to go for. Like a lot of the a lot of like your your personal preference will have to do with like two things, like the impulse responses and the saturation type, right? Um, like I tend to like the sort of JCM modded Marshall kind of like chunky sort of tone. Um, whereas like a lot of like some of the, 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 the Abbasi stuff can be kind of described as more of like that silky sheeny X six L six Mesa a kind of top end. I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's like, it's definitely a different personality and they, and they were going to fit different parts. Um, it also depends on your source material as well. Like if you have different pickups that aren't really suited for the style of amplifier, it's not going to really work well for you. So, and again, that's something that I hope to demonstrate today is just the versatility of tones you can get from it and how some are going to be more applicable to other, to, to certain context. There we go. Yeah, okay, so this is something that I wanted to address. So Sebastian Sid says, uh, what's up, man? Great plugins. I have the Abbasi and is really great for lead tones and nasty shit. Uh, but I've been I've been having issues with the gate. Any news if that is going to develop in an update? Yes. Yes, that is going to be updated. That um, The gate is basically an earlier version of the current gate that's coming out on the latest um, Neural DSP plugins. So yes, it is going to get um, it is going to get an update. Uh, when that is coming in, ETA, I'm not sure, but they are actively working on that. Uh, Ginger, Ginger, fuck me, Ginger says active or passive pickups. Either or, you know, I mean, it's, it's again, it's sort of like styly, stylistically, you know, going to be up to your personal preference. I per like really realistically, like I've actually been more go uh, going more towards uh, passive pickups recently. Um, something about the like dynamics of saturation with passive pickups has started to really kind of like appeal to my ear more than the active style pickup. So I actually have my ESP LTD um, Eclipse back there. It has the EMG 81s, 85s in it. Um, so that's one that I can also demonstrate between that and another one of my, my guitars. So Yeah, Ivan Gents says, make please update for a bossy with guitar tuner. Yeah, dude, it's on its way. Just, you know, I appreciate you guys being patient about that, um, but it's on its way. <laughs> Dirt Racer X says, I'm in love with the Zool pedal. Don't even use the built-in gate on NTS. Dude, yes, the Zool is one of my absolute favorites. All right. Miles does music says I use the Abbasi for my for all my YouTube and Insta videos and I was initially mad that I didn't get it sooner, but now that I have it, I'm in love. Good man, I'm glad I'm glad you I'm glad you love it. You know, like they, it's uh, they're great plugins. Honestly, like the Abbasi is is probably one of the lesser talked about in the forums, but I think that it's sort of a sleeper and that it has such range and possibility for different tones that, um, yeah, people like. I, I feel like it's it's probably going to be one that you have to tweak a little bit more to get to a point where you're super happy with the tones. But once you dial in those tones, like never ever like delete the presets, never ever get rid of them because it's amazing. All right. Ah, Alex Forrest, yes. Uh, he says, that a Strandberg back there? Yes. Uh, I just got one of the Strandberg classic, or uh, uh, what, what was it? Yes, I just got one of the Strandbergs. Um, it has one of their newer classic set pickups, uh, classic pickup sets, um, and it's fucking amazing. Um, definitely planning on doing a handful of uh, Artist Tones videos with that one. Um, it's dope, uh, and I'll definitely show that off during the stream too. Um, Riffin Destroy says, "Man, Dark Glass is the best plugin that I have for bass. It's awesome, killer plugin, dude. Yeah, and that was that was our first plugin." It's amazing. Like I use that on every single one of my mixes now, even if it's just like a minor bit of like flavoring in the mid range, it has this sort of mid range growl that I feel is just so appropriate to the bass. 
All right. Do 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 do. Let's see. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, let me see if I can I can get this question. So Fuentes asks, uh, if you had the newly released plugins when you had to do certain artist tones videos, would you do certain things differently? Of course, yeah, absolutely. Um, like, probably, so like, let me see, what did I do? I think I did, I think I used the Fortin Nameless on... I think Fort Nameless and maybe Pliny on um, the Jerry Cantrell, Alice in Chains artist tones. Like it was one of the first first episodes that I did, and probably with that, I mean, like I would probably also include like the Granifier on the EL thirty four settings, maybe. Um, let's see, Archetype Nolly Second Head would also be a great contender for that sort of tone. And maybe even the third, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, like as as new plugins come out, like I may even rehash and compare and contrast like previous tones that I dialed in with the newer newer amps and kind of let you guys decide what you think of them. Um, because a lot of people have really been enjoying the presets that I've been putting out. Um, but I definitely want to continue expanding on those and really trying to make the best presets that I possibly can for you guys to just play around with. Cause like, I think that the benefit of having like good presets for, especially the newer plugins is though that you have sort of a starting point on where you can take your tones and also like flipping back and forth between presets. You can see how certain components will interact with each other. So, all right. Okay, so Jonathan Harbour says, I get on with the clean amp and the high gain, but it's the rhythm one I struggle with the most. So, so Jonathan, go ahead and describe to me some of the things that you are having issues with, like specifically, because I would, I would love to address that uh, on stream if I could. Um, all right. Yeah, Warborn says, let's hear you rip it up on the eight string, man. Cool. Yeah, sure. Let's, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into some, some audio tones. Let me just flip over to my, as I mentioned before, I'm kind of like on the fly trying a new sort of, uh, duh, duh, duh. does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Mm. Okay, so here we go. So I got my eight string. I apologize if the frame rate on this this uh, camera angle is a little funky. Uh, I'm trying something a little bit different because I wanted to get a little bit, you know, I wanted to get a different camera angle so that way it's a little bit more dynamic. Um, let's see. And also, if the if the uh, audio is really really low for the guitar, it's just because I'm trying to keep the processing to a minimum, so that way you guys have as clear an idea of like the tones as possible as I dial them in. So this one's a little low. I'm actually watching. A, I'm watching a, a meter on the right hand side to make sure that I'm not blasting you guys. So. So John Memos actually brings up a really, really good point. Um, so John Memos says, might I suggest with every plugin, you guys start tweaking the tone with a single SM57. Trying to get a tone while messing around with mics and phase cancellation and stuff is never a good idea. And I would wholeheartedly agree with that. So generally like, okay, so let's say, okay, what sort of tones would you want to hear on an eight string guitar? Like obviously we have our, our Genty sort of stuff. Um, but like, aside from that, I can go through like a clean channel of rhythm and then a lead channel. If that sounds good to you guys. Um, so let's, yeah, fuck it. Let's just do that. Let's go ahead and start with clean channel 
And I'll, what I'll do is I'll do like a clean, then I'll do like maybe a uh, sort of crunchy. So when we get to this IRs, here we go. Make sure that I'm in tune. So let's say I wanted to dial in sort of like, sort of a clean, all right? So as as John Memos mentioned, start with like a 57. You know, that's one of the most popular popular IRs just to begin with. Um, now, normally if I'm doing sort of like a mix or dialing in tone, I try to keep it within the context, but of the, of the actual mix when I'm putting in, you know, impulse responses and stuff, but okay. Full on clean that doesn't sound like a piezo and more like a BB King tone. I cannot get one. Maybe the wrong plug-in. Hmm, it's possible. Well, let's see. I mean, like, again, that's sort of one of those things where you're gonna have to really try and uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and mess around with the gain a little bit. And you'll see, because this one doesn't have like the same sort of volume compensation as some of the other guitar plugins, I'm going to be moving the input and outputs or the output knob quite a lot uh, during this. So just bear with me on that. Ooh, a little out of tune. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, Roland Lima says, check out the EQ. Are you asking for sort of a, a post EQ visual? In which case I can have that up as well. Or are you just talking about check out the EQ on the thing, which I can, let's just do both. Why not? Bam. All right, so that's something pretty good for like a clean sort of little bit of saturation. Yeah, the tone sounded good. It helps a lot. Nice. Awesome. Good. Good to know. All right. So here's what I'll do. After after I see people going like, yeah, awesome, good tone, 
I keep looking at the wrong camera. Aha. So after uh, after each time I see somebody say like a oh, great tone, I'll go ahead and save this as sort of a uh, eight string clean. And as I mentioned before, I don't know if you guys saw it on the Facebook group, but what I want to do is I want to take all of these uh, presets that I'm making today during the stream and I'll drop them in the Facebook users group um, just so that way you guys uh, that way you guys have access to everything that I'm working on here. Yeah, Steven Sayer says uh, the boost transforms that clean amp. I agree. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've always loved a really good boost, and especially uh, like, you know, the, the Pathos pedal is really good because it has like a little tone stack on it. So you have so much control over it to begin with. Now I'm on my neck pickup. <laughs> That's nice. I like that little sort of like mid growl. See, I'm <laughs> now you guys get to see how, how much of a mediocre guitar player I am too. <laughs> but anyway, so having this sort of thing at your fingertips. Oh, yeah, I like that. I actually really like having the treble kind of boosting into the saturation of the head. Fuentes says, could you share them on Unity as well? Absolutely. I'll post them in both places so that way anybody, you'll, you'll be able to find them for sure. <laughs> uh, Ike, I'm going to guess that's how you pronounce. Uh, uh, Ike says, uh, hey, just want to thank you for the awesome amp sims. First, I got Pliny, used it all over an album. Uh, then I got Granifier because it's so heavy. Yesterday, I got a, a bossy. I don't think I'm set. <laughs> I know the feeling, dude. Uh, I know the feeling. I feel like that right now with guitars because like, I, got, I got this couch full of guitars right now, and I'm like, I could use more, more. <laughs> Okay, cool. Why don't I do a little something like with the clean and then also add in some effects too. So let's talk about the delay. Something that I've really always loved about these delays is just the versatility of them and then... Uh, Something that I always really like doing, especially if I'm playing by myself or like I kind of want to get like this nice pillowy backdrop to my to my music, a little bit of texture. Take the high cut and pull it all the way down because the normal, you know, normally when you get a, a, a delay, it's sort of like this, right? So you have the, the sharpness of that note ringing through, right? So like if I'm playing any sort of like leads... Right? I, I kind of don't like that. So what I like to do, and I learned this from uh, watching some Devin Townsend videos, is take this high cut and drop it back. And what that does is that takes out all of the transient information and leaves all of the lows and low mids. So you get sort of that... that i like that a lot uh and then we get the abbas i mean like uh, this this one i would say that the uh abbasi effects rival my favoritism uh with the plini um i like the cleanness of the plini the best i, th I think Okay, so Goda asks a good question. He's, he's, he asks, uh, does higher sample rate means higher quality sound? Um, you'll get a cleaner top end, basically. And it has to do with how the signal is processed after distortion and saturation are added. 
because what happens is when you take a clean DI and you put it through compression and distortion and stuff like that, um, you start getting these harmonics up into the frequency spectrum. Now, those harmonics, if you're if your sample rate is not high enough to really represent those harmonics, um, well, I'm going to check something real quick. I just want to see if my face is, yeah, okay, so I'm talking with you guys. Um, just looking at my, my framing right now. Um, but if your sample rate is not high enough to represent those frequencies that are in the upper end of, like, you know, past, like, 48 kilohertz and, you know, 96, whatever, um, then those actually get misinterpreted lower down in the frequency spectrum. Uh, it's called aliasing. What the what the the neural dsp plugins do on the oversampling is basically process your signal at higher sample rates and then low pass it to the session sample rate so that way they are able to represent those higher frequencies so you get less aliasing and you get a cleaner tone so in a sense you do get a little bit better quality right um it might actually be interesting video to to make actually um if you guys are interested in having sort of a a comparison of guitar tones dialed in at you know 44.1 48 kilohertz 96 one to, you know whatever um yeah let me know i would i would i would actually kind of be interested to do that experiment myself um because i feel like what you would probably get is a slightly cleaner uh top end but otherwise, if you're listening to it in a full mix, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear the difference, if that makes sense. So, yeah, if that's something that you guys are interested in, haha, um, let me know. Yeah, Jen says the Pliny Reverb has this often uh, awesome space feature. It's killer. I t totally agree. Um, Michael D, of course. Yeah, he says, uh, can we share our own settings on Unity? I made two for the Abbasi. By all means, there's a there's a, there's a a thread specifically for Abbasi presets. So yeah, upload them there. And uh, yeah, yeah, by all means, by all means. That's, that's what it's there for, is for users to upload their own presets uh, in order to, you know, kind of share the goodness. Um, yeah. Nigel says, hello from Florida. Hey, Nigel, what's up, dude? Okay, Lear says, sorry for the repost. Um, yeah, dude, uh, it's no worries. I'm going to miss... Qu uh, I actually have a, an additional tiny monitor, like, right here underneath my original camera, so I'm, like, so I can be on this full screen without having the chat up at the same time, so I'm kind of, like, kind of... Again, I'm experimenting with a new format. So he says, uh, hey, Steve, I'm this close uh, to getting a new laptop. Is there any major difference between in Intel and AMD processors? Will and uh, neural DSP plugins in most DAWs, I use Cubase 9.5, work just the same on AMD? Okay, I my experience with AMD was not great. Um, I know there are other people who use AMD and don't have an issue, but I did purchase an AMD equipped um, computer. Gosh, what was this? I think it was actually before... I was working with Neural DSP. Was it? Was I? Yeah, I think it was before I was working with Neural DSP. I bought a, I bought a computer from somebody, and it was AMD Ryzen something or other, and it it was it was garbage. Like I had crashes constantly, and you know, in you know, some of you guys who have been in the 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 uh, streams lately know that I've been having crashes with this current computer. But that was because uh, installation error. Uh, somebody put too much thermal paste on the CPU, it dripped across the motherboard and fried a bunch of circuits. I have a new motherboard in there now, so it's perfect. I love it. Um, so are you going to get better performance out of Intel? I, I have a feeling yes. Um, I would still do as much research as I can to make sure that you're getting the right thing for your setup, but yeah. Anyway, back to back to the stuff. <laughs> Rex Cassidy says, okay, start over, just got here. Uh, let's see, we're doing some Abbasi presets and, uh, dialing in some tones. Got my eight string in my hand right now and just did some eight string clean here for a second. So what I'm going to do, um, every preset that I dial in today, again, I'm going to put up in the Facebook group. So I'm going to save eight string clean here. Let's move on to some like rhythm tones. Uh, let's actually do default. I want to start, I want to start default on these every time. Um, just so you guys kind of know where I go. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with the Dynamic 57 to start. 
Okay, that bass is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw on the EQ, but you get this sort of like. All of that right there, that is, that is just, that's just too much. Um, so usually the first thing that I start to do is either I'm going to start with the EQ, I'm going to start with that or the bass or the, the, the tight knob here or with the pathos but let's start with the uh, the tight knob i like this one because it sort of tightens up that low end you hear how that bottom end sort of sags when you start taking that that tight end tight knob a little bit down I haven't really prepared any riffs for this. Um, let's see. Okay, so yeah, I got my tight knob dialed up. That's gonna be really, really helpful because it's sort of multi-band compression on the low end. Uh, I could take my knob uh, gain knob down. It, typically for my rhythm tones, I don't boost. I don't use this low end boost because it gets a little too flubby. Here I kind of cleans up that tight end. Yeah, Alex Forrest says Flub City. Uh, good band though. Um, if you are, if you guys ever check it out, my homies in uh, a band called Flub from Sacramento. They're they're pretty awesome. Also apologize about the tuning. So. I mean, like, to my ear, that's not so bad. Awesome. Take the presence down a little bit. All right. Now... It's getting a little, mm, it, it's a little not uh, gainy enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this smooth. I'm just going to try and use this as a boost into the head. Yeah, there we go. Uh, John McDaniel asks, what is your best description for what the presence control is doing on the Abbasi? Uh, Jens, uh, I'll, I'll take... I'll, I'll, I'll take this question really quickly. Uh, Jens asks... Uh, are the Jens or Jens? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, man. Uh, since I've created with... Uh, I've created a lot of work... Uh, created some few presets with different neural plugins. Where can I share them if best, uh, best if desired in the Facebook group? So you can share them in the Facebook group or unity.neuraldsp.com. And that is our, our website for sharing presets. So, I mean, you share it on both, you know, there are some people who prefer checking out the Facebook because they get all the notifications and that's where most people spend their time anyway. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so Facebook, unity.neuraldsp.com. Those are usually the best way, best places to go. Um, but yeah, okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about this preset already. 
and like I said, I'm kind of sticking with just a 57 to start. Um, because your 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 impulse responses are gonna really kind of relate more towards the mix than anything else. Like right now, I'm dialing in what just is going to sound good. Um, but like you could probably what ha what you would probably do with these presets to, like if you were to drop them into a mix, keep all the settings the same, and then just flip through the uh, impulse responses just to see what sounds best in your mix. Because um, those are what that's what's gonna really like affect the EQ curve the most. Anyway, cool. So that's a pretty decent, uh, decent rhythm tone I feel for for this kind of style. I like that song. Anyway, yeah, Michael D says sounds like it cleared its sinuses. Agreed. Uh, micro cuts. Will this Q Q and A be available later as a video? Yes. Um, generally, whenever the, you have the uh, live live stream stuff, uh, it'll take a, a few minutes to process, uh, and then it'll be posted like by YouTube automatically after the live stream is done. Um, Chris Strong asks, "Can a bossy do thrash tones?" That's a good question. Pretty sure. Why don't we do that? Let's go ahead. Um, yeah, Sven says, uh, I don't think a bossy is suitable for a tight thrash tone. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, Roland says, I like pulling the mic away from the middle and back. Gives you less fuzz. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the different microphone uh, placements is going to really affect where that sort of resonance or whistly frequencies are going to be. So, like, if I was to take this particular, uh, like, you know, the riff. <laughs> That's so out of tune. Here, I'm going to do this real quick. Make it this more in tune. So I have been... Uh, I've had these guitars out for the past couple of hours because I wanted to get them, like, used to... Used to being out. But then I play on them and they go out of tune because the heat from my hands kind of throws them out. That's why when you're in recording situation, you you tune after every single riff. Okay. Yeah, so like right there sounds pretty good for, you know, kind of getting away from those sort of whistly frequencies. Now, the problem we have with that is moving the moving the microphone away from the cone is going to introduce a lot more like mids and low mids. So you do have to kind of balance those two things, whether you add some EQ shaping afterwards or, you know, multiband compressor or something along those lines. But anyway, so... Let me just put this back in its, I think it was at 35. I don't know. And then, uh, sure, give or take. Okay. John Fedor says, uh, I love Abasi. Thanks for the sale. Of course, dude. Happy we can help. Yeah, Roland says, I don't know about everybody else, but the guitar pickups have a huge impact on the presets you make. Uh, I have to adjust on different guitars I use. Agreed, yeah. The, as, I mean, like, even just as simply as moving the input gain knob um, can have an immense difference uh, on your tone, especially between, like, active and uh, passive pickups. Uh, Deagle B says, can you describe the functions of those toggle switches on the amps? Uh, I can't seem to find information on that. It's basically more like a high shelf and low shelf. I believe it's pushing it into the amplifier. I, I don't, I, I don't quite remember right off the top of my head. I'll look in the, uh, um, I'll look in the manual, uh, in a minute. Okay, shall I move to a different guitar? I saw somebody asking about thrash tones, so I'm kind of, I'm actually kind of curious. Um, 
Callie is the king of thrash, in my honest opinion, says Fern. Yeah, 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 definitely. Very, very thrashy. Has that sort of mid rangey kind of, uh, kind of, kind of tone that's that's indicative of that sort of style. Yeah, Diggleby, no problem. Okay, let me just go ahead and move to another guitar. Let's see, and then I'll save this preset. Save it. Uh, Eight string heavy Obsin, because I was playing Obsin, so why not? Uh, John Fedors, yeah, John Fedor, I'm I'm playing my eight string right now. Okay. Why don't I just go ahead and go with active pickups? Since those legators were, um, legators were our passive pickups. Um, let's hear what a set of active pickups sound like on this particular instrument. Make sure that I'm not. Okay. Go ahead and put this back on default. Go to my IR, go to my 57, turn the other one off. Now, if you guys, if you guys don't know this yet, if you guys don't know this yet, this is a little bit of a, a little bit of a hack. Um, oh, let's, let's go to my facey face. Just so I don't show anything off that I'm not supposed to. Um, okay, yeah, so if you guys don't know yet, um, here's, let me, what am I looking for? Um, C drive. What happens is, okay, so here's what, here's what you can do. C, pro, oops, not temp. What I'm doing is I'm looking for my neural DSP. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I have my my presets uh, folder here. So I have my archetype bossy, nolly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what you can do if you want to change your default settings. So like you see how every time I go to the default, it goes to 421 and whatever else it is. I think the 121. I don't know. Um, what you can do is so so I can take this. Uh, I can change my settings, etc. What I do is I end up saving this with the name default. Now that's going to be put into your user folder. Take that default and replace it into your main folder here. So you see that there's an XML file here called default. Replacing that with another one called default, that will be now your new default. If you ever want, like if you ever just like find yourself changing the exact same thing every single time, like going from the high oversampling to normal or vice versa, that's how you can change your default uh, preset. Quick little tip. There we go. Uh, L. Von Badger. What's up, Dean? How's it going? Uh, he asks, what's your lowest tuned six string? I think it's the um, Squire Telly I have right now. That one's tuned to C sharp standard. I do have, I believe... I believe I have the Jazz Master in D standard, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I believe this one's in drop D currently. Um, let me make sure that I'm on the right. Yes, okay, great. Um, it's not a Fender baritone. It's not a baritone. I just, it's it's kind of a long story, but I ended up getting that guitar for free. I was going to replace the, uh, I was going to give it to one of my students. And this is years and years ago. I was going to give it to one of my students, and then uh, I found out the the uh, um, the truss rod is completely stripped inside the guitar because it really really needs um, a setup. Like the neck is is bowed back pretty pretty extensively. So what I ended up doing is I just kept it and I'm going to have, I have a baritone neck that I'm going to replace with it at some point uh, in the future. But at one point I was like, well, I'm going to put some strings on it. They're going to just pull the neck forward. So I put some like, I think 12 to 54, 13 to 56 on them or something like that. Uh, so that way I could pull the neck forward and use it as at least like a C sharp standard sort of baritone E kind of telly. 
All right. Let's yeah, Scotty Dog, that jazz master is sweet. Dude, I love this thing. It's not mine. I wish it was, but I yeah. All right. Whoops. I just talked a whole lot and my mic was muted the entire time. Apologies. <laughs> okay, but you got y'all heard basically what was going on. Um yeah, the mic is off. Yeah. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. There's a little bit of a delay, so yeah, once you guys hear once once you guys see a couple of people say your mic is off, I've definitely seen it. So Yeah, Sven says, yeah, testament. Yep. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm getting, like, the slightest bit of latency right now, so I'm going to have to turn this down, actually. not realizing that I'm mute, I'm doing it. What I really need to have, what I think I'm going to start doing is I'm actually going to use what's called a mutomatic uh, uh, plugin and just have my... <laughs> Sounds pretty good. <laughs> to my ear, like, I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Yeah, Jason, the uh, the latency is real for us too. Can hear your strings through the mic. Uh, 15 milliseconds before the amp sound, the struggle is real. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to try and be better about muting the, the microphone while I'm actually playing. Um, just because, yeah, it's going to be the best best sound for you guys. Also, you guys are hearing... Uh, whoa, whoa. Um, you guys are also hearing the guitars through the microphone as well. So yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of hard. Um, the streaming thing is not the easiest thing in the world to get get down. So I think I like the uh, the the pathos beforehand, but I might make some slight adjustments back on the EQ. Thank you. 
Okay, yes. So having the Abasi overdrive beforehand kind of cleans up the, the tone a little bit, which I like. Um, is it adding a little bit too much treble, which I'd end up probably taking off with either the, you know, little treble knob or something like that? But yeah. Let's try this one. Let's try, let's try both. I think the third head actually has a little bit more of that thrashy kind of mid rangey sound to to it. Uh, Jason Brogley asks, "Have you uh, do I have any favorite uh, combos combining elements of Abasi with other archetype amps? No worries if you want to keep the stream specific to Abasi. Um, it's a good question. I like the I like the Pathos uh, pedal quite a bit." And I'll use that occasionally on some uh, um, some of the other amps. I, I've actually tried using the Apothos with the uh, the Pliny, and it had some some pretty good effects to it. Um, awesome. <laughs> Pavel says, "Put in front of you on the wall, big written word, muted. Trust me, gonna help. I, I'm I'm trying, man. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I appreciate you guys being patient with me." Um, Yeah, Jen says, uh, always love the tightness with active pickups. I have three different blackout models on my seven strings. Uh, love them for the tightness. Of course, passive ones are more dynamic. Love the Black Winter. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Okay, so Aditya Kamath says, it would be really nice if you could give a basic overview of how to use the inbuilt nine-band EQ. It feels very important for this plugin. Yes. As any as any EQ would be. Um, so, the way that I generally approach the EQ is, I use it more for soft shaping than for anything else, and a lot of it. Okay. Sebastian says no mic and that made me fucking panic. <laughs> so uh, how do you how do you still going out? So I probably, uh he's probably got a little bit of delay on his stream. So anyway, um so basically what I generally tend to do um is just low end or high end uh control. So like if I were to be playing this guitar, like I'll just say I want to take this and shape it just a little bit. I'll go ahead and do that with my with my I'll do that with my mic muted so that way you guys can hear kind of the direction I will take this. Okay, 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it on and off so you can hear just how very, very small movements, just kind of like doing minus 1.2, minus 1.8 dBs, you know, on the low end, and like a little bit of a dip at 4K is gonna help shape this sort of sound. Because with this with this EQ, you don't really have to do very aggressive movements. I mean, unless, unless you're going for a very specific tone, like something maybe lo-fi on a cleaner channel or something along those lines, you don't really have to do a whole lot with it to get it to feel feel good. But let me go ahead and turn this on and off for you. So you can even see on the EQ uh, how those sort of moves affected the, the overall shape of the EQ, uh, uh, EQ curve. Um, so that's kind of the way that I would go about it is listen to what you like and don't like about the signal. And generally what I will always do is I'll take my bands and I'll boost them up so I hear specifically what it's, it's being affected and then I'll drop it down just just so I can still hear it, but not like take it out all the way. Yeah, Andre says after the EQ, the muddiness disappears. Agreed. Yeah. Eh? Heavy metal chainsaw says no sound. It's still. I don't know what's up with you. With what's up with your guys' stream? You guys must be on a, on a severe delay. Um, I got audio right now, so I'm doing pretty good. I think. Okay, doing all right right now. So. We're just going to keep going. Um, but yeah, so that's generally my, my, my approach is I will just take these bands. I'll, I'll kind of boost them up. So I hear specifically what they affect. I'll drop them back down. So that way I can, you know, and, and I'm not going to drop them so much that I don't hear those frequencies anymore, because what's going to happen is you get used to hearing specific frequencies. And what that kind of means is that sensory adaptation will take over and you'll stop hearing annoying frequencies. Um, so, if you drop them so far that you can't hear them, it's actually going to start killing your tone. So like if I dropped my 4K tone to like minus 5.2, that's going to sound like absolute garbage. Uh, Yes, 4K is is a really, really common frequency for a lot of people to absolutely hate. Um, but again, if you cut those too much, you end up actually just like neutering your sound. All right, so let's see. I'm I'm not I'm not muted, so that's good. All right, so we've already gone on for an hour. What like so so what do you guys want to hear next? I I'm, I'm kind of just like I'm going to go until I feel that the 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 points have been made that you guys want to see. Uh Roland Lemus says one request use the MIDI to change from preset to another on a bossy if that is okay. That's going to take a little bit of doing. Um let me see if I can't quickly execute that. Hang on a second. I don't know if you can see it. Let me check my, my framing. Yeah, okay. So I have my MIDI keyboard here. Uh, and I've been using this for you know, several several different things. But um, let's go ahead and move this over just a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do, let's see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. MIDI track. This one is going to guitar main, uh, bossy one, channel one, bossy plugin. Let's say I want to add a 
note preset. Uh, whatever. Note preset. Let's do another one. Note preset. So this is going to be. Let's do C1. And then D1. Let's see. I have to find C1 and D1 on my my thing real quick. Is it reading me? Oh yeah, I have to hit this. Oh, let me save this preset real quick. Uh, six string thrash. All right. Where is it? Did I get it right? Let me see. Maybe we'll MIDI learn. Okay. So there's that. So MIDI is always like, MIDI has always been a frustrating thing for me because there's like, there's not enough. Okay, so that's D1. So let's actually change this. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Pathos drive. What? I'm gonna get rid of all of these. I'm gonna start over. So let's try this. I wanna know what note is specifically coming from like this pad here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enable MIDI learn. I'm just going to tap this pad a couple of times. It's going to turn my, my logos on and off. All right. So we'll go ahead and disable MIDI learn. I'll open up the thing. All right. That's C3. I have no idea why this is attached to C3, but there we go. All right. So logos active. Let's go ahead and change this to a note preset. So I'm going to go blue whale C3 channel one, bam, blue whale. Let's do another one. And another one, enable MIDI learn. Let's go with this next pad. Okay. Disable MIDI learn. Let's go to this. C sharp three. Cool. So now I can go back. So now that I know that this is C3, I can do note preset, uh, six string thrash, and then go to C, where am I? C3. So C3 and C sharp three are on these, these two pads here. So now I can go bam and bam. Wait. Come on, come on. Note toggle, note preset. Toldsworth, sure. C3, C sharp three, okay, great. Bam, bam, bam. And that's how you switch through. So some boards are easier to program what notes are coming out than others, but that's generally how I troubleshoot whether a MIDI controller is actually functioning or not, or what notes are coming out, what's being what's being uh, communicated across to to different uh, different ways. So, yeah. Yeah, Lorellan says, okay, I'm watching you like a hawk, learning, learning, learning. Yeah, um, it, it's a lot of like just problem solving, troubleshooting, a lot of like trial and error. So like, again, so now that I know like C sharp, or like my pads are C3, C sharp 3, probably D3 and D sharp 3, um, I can now kind of adjust that parameter. So let, let me just try something real quick. Let me see if my note preset, go gently. We'll go D sharp three, or sorry, D three. There we go. Bam, bam. Now I'm switching bef between all my presets. So um, let's see what else is there. Okay. Uh, Aditya asks, Aditya asks uh, is the muted tuner going to be available in the next VST3? I don't, I don't know, actually. I don't know if that's coming in an update. <laughs> Matt Merson says, you should have done this video a few days ago before the sale ended. I would have bought it after seeing this video. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the, I think the sale's going on through today, but I'm not 100% sure. Check the, check the website. Um, cause there was some problems with the website yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so check the website and try the Abasi 50 at, at, at checkout just in case, just in case. I don't, I don't know. Um, 
Uh, Andre asks, what key to, keyboard is that, if I might ask? This is the Alesis V49. It's just a super duper, like, basic MIDI keyboard controller thing. Um, basically, I got it so that way I could... Um, let me actually change my, my camera as well. Um, so I, I got this just so I could simply... Um, you know, program out little keyboard parts. And so that way I could kind of like just do very, very basic, simple stuff. It's not a great keyboard, um, but it gets the job done. Uh, eventually I want to get something with weighted keys, but you know, that, that'll be later. Uh, Tyler Britton asks, uh, any bass stuff in the works? Maybe we'll see. Huh. Okay, this is an interesting question. Deagleby asks, uh, also regarding MIDI, can you route your EQ section to a console with faders so it feels like you are at a mixing desk? Hmm. That's actually a really good question. Um, why don't we try that? Why, why don't we? Let's, let's try that. So I'm going to... So if you guys see on my controller here i have several knobs here and i believe that these are sending out like cc uh relative or cc continuous messaging or something along those lines but let's see if i can uh if i can attach these to my eq section so let's say do do do, do. <laughs> ah that's awesome okay so the answer to your question is yes so if i want to do this I can enable me to learn. Yeah. So now with all of my faders, well, that one's getting a little jumpy. Why is that happening? That's really funky. Okay. Disable MIDI learn. Oh, it's because I'm using. It's because I had to say uh, enable MIDI learn on all the time. So enable MIDI learn. Ba -ba, uh, disable. You gotta hit disable every time. Enable MIDI learn. Okay. Disable MIDI learn. Yeah. And then bat. And then enable MIDI learn. Dot. And then that. And then enable MIDI learn. Dot. And that. So now all my four bands are going to move independently of each other uh, as I go. So if you wanted to do something cool with that, you could. All right. There you go. That, that, that answers your question. That's very interesting. OK. Uh, Jose Guzman asks, uh, pardon my question, can I use my IR with your plugins? Yes. Um, any IR can be loaded in the impulse response section. Uh, load custom IR. So that's going to be. That, that's where you do that. Now map the EQ sliders to expression pedals. Yeah, you can do that. You can absolutely do that. I don't have my expression pedal on me or out at the moment, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll save that to later. But yeah, you can absolutely do that. If you can, if you can attach your, your knobs to, to these and use them as, as uh, sliders, then yeah, you can absolutely do that. Oh, dude, Lee Malone says, hey, Sven, it's Ed from Sacramento. What's up, dude? Good to see you, brother. He says, uh, I'm digging this so much right now. Good to see you, man. Hope all is well in, uh, in Sacramento. I was one of, one of my Sacramento homies. All right. Um, yeah, glad, glad, you're, glad you're hanging out, man. It's good, good, to, good to see, see you. you know? <laughs> uh, Matt Merson asks, uh, how has Neural DSP avoided having their plugins cracked for so long? I'm not trying to pirate them. I'm just interested. Uh, I think that has to do with uh, uh, the iLock system pace. You know, that, that like some people get really frustrated with the iLock system and, and I, I, I sort of get it. Like I've never had a problem with their stuff before, but like I get some people have issues with it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it has to do with like the pace anti-piracy kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Sander Talfs asks, is there any way to process both left and right DI tracks in one instance of the plugin? Yes. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and grab a guitar and I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll just demo it real quick. Actually, I don't even know if I have to do that. Let's see. Let's go ahead and go into this. Um, okay. Um, let's go ahead and do this. And two. I'm going to do. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two mono tracks. And what I'm doing is I'm dragging this. Now these are uh, ungroup. Uh, these are are the same. These are actually the same DI. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this. This is for one of the uh, examples later. But I'm going to use this as an example for this now. Okay, so that's a, that's the turnaround point. So what I can do since these are two different tracks. I'm going to pan them hard left and hard right. Now, uh, GTR stereo. So just so I know what it is, let's go ahead and pull up Abasi. Stereo instance of archetype Abasi. Make sure, make absolutely certain that your mode is in stereo. Otherwise, it's just going to come out as um, a weird uh, phasey mess. So 57 and then... All right, now route them to the bus, track GTR stereo. Oops, that was the wrong one. That's basically what you would do. Okay. Yeah, thanks, man. Lee Malone says, uh, good to hear your voice and see the music power still flowing. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's good to see you, man. Um, yeah, I miss a lot of people from Sacramento, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting moving to a whole new whole new city. Prashoria, thank you so much, man. He says, you're phenomenal, brother. Love your videos. I appreciate you being here, man. Let's see. Um, let's see. Aditya says, just one more thing. Is the Pliny, in the Pliny plugin, there is a knob which controls the space in the reverb. Uh, is there any way to recreate that in the Abasi to get that huge ambient reverb tone? So the space knob is sort of like a stereo knob, if you, if you will. Um, let's, let's go ahead and go to this camera because it's, it's better. It's nicer. Um, and I'll, talk to you guys directly so the Pliny um is definitely again it's one of my favorites but like so that that space knob i believe is more just like a mono to stereo sort of sort of thing like let's see let's see if i can't let's see if i can't get it all right um <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
What you could also do, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be an experiment. You and I are both going on an adventure together. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to do is, let's go ahead and put this there. We'll make a send um, to bus to track aux one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try something a little bit different, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the effects off of the end of the one that we just did, right? So we have archetype bossy. That is the, the clean stuff that I just dialed in uh, here. So... Right, so that's now just a blending of the the piezo and the regular amp, right? So this is all the same processing as before. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm going to to change. I'm going to I'm going to kind of mess around with the effects as a send rather than as a uh, oops. Nope, that's right. Okay, great. <laughs> Right, so you, can, can you guys hear the difference yet already? Let's, let's keep going. Let's do this stereo aux. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to keep making this more like the thing I like to do is taking these processes and just making them as unique as possible. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, okay, so input uh, bus, 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 aux one. Okay, so I'm sending the same signal to aux one, aux two, archetype bossy aux one has the delay on it. Aux 2 has the stereo on it. I get really excited about this stuff. So let's go ahead and just fuck around with this. Okay. So that sounds kind of cool. What I'm what I'm essentially doing is I'm I'm making sends out of the delay and the reverb, and then I'm putting a little compression on the delay and the reverb at a little bit different different amounts. Um, so that way I get a little bit more of that pillowy goodness in the background. Yeah, Jen says, they, dude, that corn inflammator is great. I hear only good things about it. This thing is awesome. Uh, I love it. Um, I used it on uh, a drum mix just recently, and it really, really helped. Um, so yeah, uh, my computer's starting to get a little, little unhappy with the amount of CPU I'm taking up with this. So let's go ahead. Are you guys interested in seeing some of the kind of creative um, presets that I that I kind of cooked up for this um, for this this stream? Let's see. All right. Yeah, Persheria says maybe use Valhalla Shimmer. I, I really, I've heard nothing but good things about the Valhalla sh Shimmer. Um, I have not used it personally myself, um, but I've heard really, really awesome things. Roland, have a good one, dude. Um... 
Let's see. <laughs> no, it's no trouble, dude. It's no trouble. Says so Aditya says, thanks, man. That was a good experiment. Uh, sorry for the trouble. No, it's no trouble at all. I, I like this stuff is fun. Um, I, I really do get to enjoy doing these sorts of things. So, so here's what, um, let's go ahead. So sort of the same principle. Okay. Uh, it's what I've been kind of messing around with recently is addressing each layer a little bit differently, getting different types of saturation into my signal while also like making my sound as, as interesting as possible. So like this is, um, so. okay. So this is something that I made up just a couple of days ago. It's kind of futzing, futzing around with the uh, Strandberg, which is amazing by the way. Um, and what I wanted to do is I love the piezo sort of sort of pluckiness to this, um, but I didn't really want to have the piezo sound in my delay. Uh, I actually wanted to really kind of get more of that sort of saturated pillowiness. Um, uh, Jens asks, I never tried a headless guitar. How do you tune it? How is the tuning stability? It's really great so far, actually. So um, it is it is on a kind of Floyd Rose floating bridge system. Oh, it's their own design. Cool. That's awesome. So it's on their own sort of like Floyd Rose style floating bridge system. Um, so you do have to keep it in a, in a single tune or only go to like maybe drop D. Um, it's not for traveling a whole lot. You generally have to keep it set up in a specific tuning um, for it to really function the way you want it to. Um, the way you tune it is you have these knobs down here uh, and you twist them to pull the nuts back and forth as you need, or well, not not the nuts necessarily, because that would throw off your intonation, but kind of pull the string into tune or out of tune wherever you need it to go, um, et cetera. So, for sure, yeah, you're getting ahead of, ahead, ahead of the curve, man. Uh, he says you could have used different delay timings in both sides. Yes. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. You, you, you're jumping ahead of me, Ram. Um, Uh, let's see. <laughs> Rex Cassidy says, flawed rose, ew. I've, ne I've never had, like, I like them well enough and they have their place. Um, I've never been a huge fan of them, but I can see their application, you know? Also, though, also, like, you guys, this is one of my favorite things I've found recently is, uh, liquid death sparkling water it's one of the most metal things in the world and i absolutely love it <laughs> um yeah i've been really digging sparkling water recently anyway but sure yes yeah so it says uh, fixed bridge makes life easier and yeah while it does make things easier sometimes there's specific tones that you want to get but you can't get them with a uh with a fixed bridge you know that's just it's just the way it goes Okay, so back to the idea. So let's go ahead and mute one of these. So I have this. Okay, I love this guitar. Anyway, so I have sort of this just piezo, very clean. The blend knob is all the way up, so I don't really have to worry about any of the other settings, right? Uh, I don't have to worry about the IRs. All I'm doing is I'm going piezo directly to a um, a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, reverb. <laughs> Then what I really wanted to do was have sort of this nice, saturated, dark, pillowy sort of background to it. So what I did is I created this other track. Now my DI is actually going into the exact same thing here. Also still has a little bit of, little bit of reverb as well. Um, compression is all the way up because I wanted it to be very, very flat. 
Um, I wanted very little dynamics to this part because the dynamics are being held are being held together in the in the piezo plucky kind of preset. Um, treble gain, that's all up. No shaping. Fit for just default um, IRs, and then into a full mix and slight blend of the reverb, and this sounds like this. That together. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, yeah, John Memo says, boy, boy, that's good. <laughs> Rex Cassidy says, like being able to tune without finding my Allen wrench. Dude, yeah, no. And that's the thing is that, like, majority of my guitars are always going to be stock, stock bridge, and that's fine. Um, this is a very, very specific style. Like, yeah, David Coffin says, so glad I found this plug and thanks to Rick Beato. Dude, Rick is a beast, man. I, I felt I, I'm really lucky because I got to I got to have dinner with him at the NAMM show. Uh, it was me, Doug, Rick and one of his friends. And it was just like a really awesome, uh, awesome conversation. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Um, cool. OK, so let me let me move on to my next thing, too. OK, so I have a couple I have a couple more examples that I want to fly through pretty quick. So let me go ahead and I'll turn these off, make it active. So again, I'm going to make sure that these presets are available to you guys when we uh, when this when this whole st stream is over. Um, OK, and really what I, what I ended up doing with these presets, I just kind of like built on the same ideas and then just like tried to push the envelope as much as I could. Thanks, man. Ike says, I uh, love the way the dirt fades with the delays on this preset. I appreciate it, dude. Um, okay, so these are, again, sort of like this, this similar, similar situation where you have, uh, let's see, syncopated delay, piezo. Like, I've, I've made a couple of different, different variations of this. So, like, again, we have, let's go to a single coil. Okay, love these pickups. They're so good. Okay. Now, what you could do with these, as I think Prashuria said, having different delay uh, delays on different channels really gives this awesome syncopated sort of thing. So, like, I did dotted quarter notes on one. And then what I did was uh, quarter notes. Let me change this back. I kind of messed around with this and things have changed around a bit. Uh, quarter notes on the other one. All right, so you have dun, dun, dun. Right, so you can hear hear the separation between the two different notes. So let me let me just play this for you, like. Right, 
So you start getting these like harmonic overtones the harder you start to play. And I'm not muted. Great, excellent. <laughs> so you start getting these harmonic overtones as you start to play. Um, so syncopated delay, do 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 do. Pilly goodness. I believe it was two. I went with a higher. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I went with this one I believe. <laughs> cool i have so much fun with this <laughs> okay so yeah so so ike is is uh is is kind of hitting the nail on the head is i started messing around with like higher gain stuff like obviously like the first was more like pillowy sort of like just kind of brownish you know kind of not brownish but like low mid heavy sort of stuff but when like i found that as i was experimenting with this the the with the mix all the way at the top it might be I don't know exactly what's causing it, but you start getting these harmonic kind of delays and you start getting these like feedback loops in there, but it's so musical. I decided, and then I, you probably watched me do it, is I pulled up the uh, logos. I have compression on full, so that way it just like slams that sound. Just moving that tone knob back and forth makes it so like, uh, ah, it sounds so cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I'll keep this. I'll keep this as small as I can because I know my my camera's in the in the bottom left. Uh, sorry, David. Um, yeah, Prashuria says uh, he must have added some distortion on one track. Yes, that's exactly right. So this this one I used the third head. You can either use the second or the third head. So let me let, let me show you how what the second one sounds like. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I'm I, 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 like, this is, I, have, I have so much fun with just like experimenting with this sort of stuff, just tweaking and dialing in the knobs just to find some like cool things, you know? Uh, let's see. Let me look back in the, in the chat real quick, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, Ike says, that's so awesome. I will definitely experiment with that. So on mix at 100, it adds some kind of resonant filter. Sort of. So like, so what I did was, um, let's just listen to this this one um, layer real quick. So I have it on the third head.
So as a sort of combination, let's mute that. So as a sort of combination between pushing the mix to full on the uh, the delay and then having the mix really, really high on the reverb kind of causes this sort of uh, feedback loop um, that's, again, very, very musical. And I, I, I'm super happy that I found that. So, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Ike says that's right up my alley anyhow. Thanks for the inspiration. Of course, dude, of course. Yeah, um, I guess, I mean, I have one more um, example of using, like, kind of synths and stuff like that. Um, Aditya says, can you try the same thing with clean tone? Of course, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, so if I wanted to go with... You don't you don't necessarily get the same feedback and overtones uh, as as before, um, but it still sounds pretty good. It's like kind of like a pillowy thing. So yeah, so there's, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do that. <laughs> Chris Strong says, is everyone starting to see why Abasi is the best one now? Dude, I fucking love it, man. I fucking love it. I, again, like this is the stuff that I really have so much fun doing is just playing around with sounds. You know, like I'm a metalhead, obviously, but like just playing around with these sort of layers and distortion and saturation and, and, and harmony and dissonance like is the stuff that really makes me happy and the stuff that I really end up enjoying the most. Um, cool. Uh, yeah. So I think I got, I got one more example for you guys, um, using synths. So let me go ahead and pop in, pop that in real quick. Yeah, Aditya says uh, it's a delight for the tweaker. You just have to tweak. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Let me figure this out real quick. All right, so I need to make inactive. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it was. It was. It was not. It was not having it for a second. Okay. Make sure. Whoop. Is that? Have that off. Turn on my synth, make active. So let's start with this guy. So let's listen to this without Archetype Bossy. Right, it's your basic, basic organ. So, yeah, man, Jen says, I understand your point, Stephen. I'm playing for over 18 years, but playing around these uh, with these plugins is so great, especially the Grand Anali and Pliny for me. Love these. I totally agree. I absolutely agree. I think that, like, well, I, th I think one of the major benefits of having these plugins on hand is that you get just access to, like, sort of instant gratification, like, you have great tones right off the bat, so it requires such little tweaking that every move you can make is just another different palette, another different flavor. Um, you can get di like direct inspiration. You know, I think even Nolly said it when he was uh, uh, during one of his videos is, uh, that we did on the the Neural DSP YouTube channel was that like having direct inspiration and being able to just open the thing up and then just play. Um, and let the riffs kind of like roll off. Like that, I think that's one of the best things about these plugins. 
CW says, so, so excited for these presets. Just finished my first song using Nali Nabasi. Still a lot to learn, so I appreciate these videos. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you saying that. I feel, I feel the love. All right. So, okay. So I was kind of messing around with this. And again, one of the best things that I found for my tone recently is just like light addition of saturation is one of the best things. Uh, so let's see. So I did organ ambient lead, uh, first head, no EQ, ribbon 121 on both, and then some delay and some reverb. So having that, like playing around with the input and getting those nice swells in just really kind of got me feeling this, like, um, how do I put it? Adam Polt says, currently the only thing I want in life is the quad cortex. Please. I feel it, man. I'm waiting for mine. I got like, I think mine's coming soon, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Presuria says you could automate that. Yes. So if you're doing it in a DAW, you could always automate this. Or if you have, like, say, you could do, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So let's see. Could I, could I just do this? Enable MIDI Learn. Da -da 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 -da. No, okay. That's uh, disable MIDI Learn. Um, let's see. MIDI one dot and then oops let's see go to the synth archetype of bossy channel one yeah so you could either automate it on your track or you can even do something like what we did earlier where I had attached the knob to the input gain so let's say I wanted to do some more of those those epic swell swells Epic Swales. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aditya says that on a volume pedal. Absolutely. Having like an expression pedal so you can attach that to the input gain is just going to be so good for you guys. Um. <laughs> John Memo says this has gone from a good clean to insane everything. Yeah, man. I, dude, like this stuff is fun. Why, why wouldn't you try and just mess around with this so like even even using this exact same preset on like say your let's do let's do the lead lead channel Uh, for sure, yeah. Have a good, have a good one, dude. Good night. Yeah, dude. Ike says I bought a bossy for the dirt amps. I think I'll stay for the effects, dude. When you start getting into like the different things you can do for this, it's just so, it's just so good. All right, um, let's try something else. Now this would be the last one, and just something kind of. I just, I just 
messed around with this and I might turn it into um, something at some point. Ooh, definitely not that. So I got this like sort of bassy. Just adding that saturation, a little bit of EQ, a little bit of, no, actually there's no EQ on that one, but um, changing around the ribbon microphones, I, it's just, it's all gonna be so much fun. <laughs> Andre says, may the force be with you. May the force be with you always. <laughs> but yeah, so, okay, it's it's now almost three o'clock. Um, this this usually only goes to about two, but I ended up just having a lot of fun and just kind of running over with this. So um, yeah, but I, I super enjoyed that. If you guys liked me just rambling and just dialing in different tones and different amps and stuff like that, if you really enjoyed this, like hit the like button, comment, put it in the chat. I want to see, I want to see you guys, you know, I, I want to know what you guys are enjoying uh, out of this, this process. So yeah, let, let me know. Yeah. Jason Brogley says three o'clock you and Cali. Yeah. 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 It's <laughs> oh, Adichie says it's 3am in India. Yeah, dude, that's, oh man, tomorrow's gonna, tomorrow's gonna, tomorrow's gonna suck. <laughs> But I appreciate you hanging out, man. Like that, that means a lot that you would like stay up and hang out and not only that, but also contribute to the chat so much like that. That was, that's really kind of you. Um, let me go ahead and get back to my face here. Um, yeah, man, like this, this is so much fun. So if you guys enjoyed me just kind of hanging out and, and dialing in tones and just interacting with you guys, you know, do, do all the things like share, subscribe, all the, you know, and, and I say that after every video and that's normally when everybody kind of tunes out, but like the more interaction I get from you guys regarding the things you like seeing and, and working with the, the more I can provide that for you. So, um, <laughs> Andre says 24 hour stream, all neural DSP plugins, tips and tricks. Uh, probably not in that inflection, but that's how I read, read, read it. Um, Yeah, Billy Nord says it's one o'clock in Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Joel Price, considering I bought, I just bought the Abasi. This is great. No, I'm, I'm glad, man. I'm really, really glad. Stinky Lizard says I've been messing around with it all day with a guitar that's older than me. Lol. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't have any guitars that are older than me, but I do like my dad does. My dad has a 68 Martin D 18, which is really, really awesome. Um, Jens, I appreciate you saying that, man. It's, so he says it's 2354 in Germany. Always love these live streams. And I appreciate you. Like I appreciate you, all of you guys like this. Um, the neural DSP community is like a multinational community. So it's one o'clock for me here. And there's definitely some like American, uh, viewers hanging out with here. But like the fact that so many people across the, the globe are willing to like stay up and lose sleep and just hang out with me on these streams is, is just amazing. And I, and I love it. Um, and I'm really grateful for it. So Yeah, Joel Price says, love the idea of patching synths through it. Uh, B3s are awesome through amp sims. I totally agree. I'm having a ton of fun with this stuff. And I've actually gotten a lot of, like, interesting song ideas uh, through some of these experiments. Because, you know, I, I was I was asked to do a, a small tone demo for, for the archetype of bossy. And... And, and that's what I did, right? So, like, I dialed in a couple of rhythm tones and stuff like that. But I really wanted to show more of the creative side that you could get with some of these plugins. Because I feel like so much has already been done. There's so many resources available where you can find tones online 
from just about any YouTuber, right? There's like a ton of people who are even populate the Neural DSP users group that post up videos of themselves playing metal stuff, lead stuff, clean stuff. Um, and that's all great. And I love it. And I'm still going to continue, you know, adding those, those presets to, you know, to, to the mix. Um, because my take is going to be different than other people. But I also really want to contribute more towards the experimental and more interesting, like, uh, production side that these have the potential for. Um, like, just the fact that I was able to get so much cool, like, feedback and harmonics just by messing around with the mix knobs on delay and reverb was, like, really cool, uh, really cool discovery for me personally. I love it. Yeah, man. So Jen says, I really love the way uh, how Neural DSP and especially you are open and near to the customers from the beginning. It's awesome. My hope, my hope for what I do here is to make a difference. Um, I understand what it is to be a musician, to be an artist, to want to create your music and to not have to really bog yourself down with so many details and, um, and ideas and technicalities and stuff like that. So my, my job, what I hope to be, is helpful in order for the artists and the creators of this community be able to create more. You know? And there's so many really amazing musicians in this community already, um, and I just hope to contribute to that. That's, that's why, you know, it's like... the my main goal in this is just to help people as cause I, that's what I love to do. And that's what is the most fulfilling aspect of this job for me is just being able to help people out. Um, so yeah, no, I appreciate you saying that, man. Yeah. Uh, Ike says, love the experimental approach, audio engineer, love tweaking. Uh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I love just being like, just, just, Playing with audio is one of the most fascinating and awesome things that I get to do. Um, Prasuria says, there are many plugins on the market, but follow-up services uh, of Neural DSP is amazing. I appreciate that, man. We, we, we really do try our best. And as we grow and continue on, like we appreciate you guys putting so much into the community yourselves. You know, it's, it's not just us. It's, it's also you guys. Um, you know, I'm not... Like, I can't build the community for everybody. Like, it's taken everybody contributing to it, which I always appreciate. Nice. Joel Price says, I just took delivery on an Oni 8-string. Uh, live in an apartment. The scale, the sale came at a perfect time. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Uh, Kevin Kemper says, the product is amazing, and I hope you guys are making money providing such wonderful stuff. Yeah, man, I, I, I definitely appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that the, the stuff is amazing because we definitely work really, really hard on what we do. Thanks, man. Jason Brogley says, once again, excellent content, man. Always look forward to your vids. Keep up the good work. Uh, Stinky Lizard says, with today being the first time I've ever touched any kind of amp sim plugin in any type, uh, I was so glad that it was pretty easy to get started, uh, get varying tones that I liked. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we want to make sure that the customer experience is such that it's just easy. It's always easy to, to, to just jump into everything. Um, and that's really, really important for us, you know? Uh, Dirt Racer X asks, uh, are there plans to put the EQ in the other amps uh, that don't currently have them? I don't 100% know. Uh, I'm not sure if those are being added because those are like, um, like our deals with Fortin and the archetypes, like those are all very separate, you know, separate things. So like we kind of are catering to those specific deals, what they ask for. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to add the EQ to them or not. I guess that depends on if they, if those individual companies want them. Um, uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, asks, you got some original music. I'm, I'm actually going to be working on some new stuff very, very, very soon. Um, keep your eyes out. I, cause I, I, I just, I've been talking with one, one of my old, uh, one of my old guitar players. Um, cause I have a little bit of time and we're going to be doing some streaming, uh, to, and just showing like the writing process. Cause we want to create some new music and we figure, you know what, why don't we stream the process, answer questions and kind of just hang out and have a good time. 
Gannon asks, any new archetypes in the work? I mean, I could answer that, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> Just kidding, man. You, we, we got some cool stuff coming up. Believe me, we got some really cool stuff coming up. Um, yeah, so any, any – okay. Yeah, it's, it's three three o'clock now. Um, any last questions before I, I close up the uh, the stream for the day? And again, I, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, so if you guys liked it and you guys stuck around and, and want to see more things like this, um, definitely let me know because um, I, I would really enjoy doing this again. Uh, Vilkas, uh, Vilka asks, uh, can you add some delay and reverb to the Fortin plugins? I mean, you could set it up in a chain afterwards, but if you're asking me to, or Neural, as, as Neural DSP, as it were, to add delay and reverbs to the Fortin plugins internally, um, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. We'll see if it does, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, agreed. Yeah, Prasharia says, Archetype Misha or Mark would be mind-blowing. I, I totally agree. Um, Lear says, almost all of the Neural DSP plugins are based from real-life amps. How did you guys go about making Parallax, or is it based on something as well? I think it's the Dark Glass X2 or something along those lines. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's our own design. Because um, you have, you know, Doug is the co-owner. He was the CEO of Dark Glass at one point, I think. I think he's still co-owner of, of Dark Glass. So, like, it's still kind of tied into that that style and, and vision if I if I were to to guess correctly um. <laughs> Ike says first time I watched a neural DSP stream I was half expecting another boring promo video really enjoyed this thanks I really really am grateful to hear that man I the one thing I didn't really want this to be was a shameless go by the archetype bossy now, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that's just not, it's not what I really wanted to do. All I wanted to do was to just kind of show the possibilities, you know, and I had a lot of fun doing it, which I feel is, is definitely different from a sales pitch because I'm having fun in the process. You know, like I, like I said, I get to play around with audio and I get to make cool things. Uh, and then I get to share it with you guys, which then you're going to take those presets and you're going to take those settings and you're going to apply that to your own music. You're going to change it. You're going to build on it. And I'm super stoked to see what you guys got going on. Nice. Lear says, that's cool. Dark Glass, in my opinion, is the modern day Ampeg. Yeah, dude. Vincent has, says, uh, hello there. That was my, that was my best uh, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi impression. It was pretty garbage. <laughs> Hello there. No, nah, it's not. I should stop doing that right now. <laughs> um. Okay, so Vincent Ver Verdini, Ver Verdini, Verdini, I'm probably saying that wrong, says, do you know if anyone has been able to get Neural DSP to work with MPC2 DAW? I know it's not a supported DAW, but some other DAWs have workarounds. Um. I would email support at neuraldsp.com and go there and check it out. Uh, talk to them, see if they can maybe work with you on that. Um. <laughs> Andre says General Steve Noby. I love it. Yeah, Vincent says, at least you got the Obi Obi-Wan joke. Nice, man. I'm glad. Or was it? Because uh, the cause the hello there, hello there was from the, was General Kenobi, right? That was from, uh, was that Attack of the Clones? When he like pops in and takes on General Grievous and he, and he just like drops in and just goes, hello there, like all. All right, I'm, I'm getting way off topic. <laughs> all right. Uh, Justin Skinner says, any chance of a trails option on archetype reverbs and delays? I'm not sure exactly what you mean by trails. If you're, I don't know if you misspelled trails with trials. Um, yeah, Vincent. I, I, okay, so I was right. Attack of the Clones. Jean 
John, yeah, the 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 Ab- says the Abasi has fed my brain creativity well. Shouldn't should have bought it sooner. I mean, honestly, try out some of these things uh, on the other other plugins as well. I'm sure you can get some really cool stuff going on the 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 Pliny and the the Nolly. Um, again, it's sort of just like taking the, like these principles and just pushing the boundaries. Um, Aditya asks, uh, uh, have you tried the neural DSP plugin with audio interfaces like the X Sonic X stomp, uh, the one with the MIDI foot switches? Uh, I haven't actually, I only have the Scarlet 18 I 20 and the Scarlet, uh, six I six. Um, the six I six was my original, uh, interface that I used. And then I upgraded to 18 I 20. Um, I'll probably move up to like audience antelope, um, maybe universal audio. I- I'm going to move up at some point to a new interface. Um, cause these ones are kind of just old and janky. Um, they're good for what they are. Um, but I'm starting to get into some like serious mixing and, and processing. So I like, I really want to get something that's, that's will handle what, 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 what like workload I need them to, to, to work with, you know? Oh, interesting. Dan's says a reverb on clean tones in parallax would be nice for the standalone. Obviously, you know what? That would actually be really interesting. Uh, getting like maybe, maybe a reverb, uh, a chorus, because obviously you want to get that sort of tool tone. Uh, so like a reverb and a chorus, um, pff, maybe a phaser as well would be kind of cool. I think that would actually get a, like a really cool like palette of, of interesting tones. Yeah, Stinky Lizard says Scarlet Gang, old and janky gang. Oh, okay, so Justin Skinner says, ah, oh, sorry, I mean a setting where the delays and reverb tails don't cut off when you switch off the pedal. So that would actually be an interesting thing to to work around with a DAW. Like if you were to find a way to MIDI switch between different tracks, um, okay, okay. So so my brain my brain's thinking real quick. If you set up two different presets on two different tracks, and then you had sort of like an input gain plugin beforehand, right? So you had like something that could zero out your signal, uh, and then switch those on uh, like to go basically on or off. Um, your signal would still be going to the output. Like, okay, let, let me. I got. I got to figure this out real quick. <laughs> um, okay, so let's say. I'm a very visual person, so I have to kind of figure this out. Uh, uh, let's see, two of these. So let's say you had the Abasi on both of these, right? Let's just change these back to this tiny one. And then let's put on like a trim plugin, right? So you could. And I don't know if you can do MIDI to this, but I mean, like, it would, it would, it wouldn't have to be like this specific plugin, but a plugin, um, basically have your output zeroed out on one of them, and then up on the other one. So that way, when you change between your different uh, different plugins, the trail from the second archetype of Bossy would then still be going to your output. So that actually might be something you can look into uh, with there. There's actually a, uh, a program from cushview.com, I think uh, called element. And what it is, is it's a mm, standalone wrapper sort of thing. Like it's a very interesting little DAW. I'm kind of been working on it, working with it a little bit, uh, might make a video on it. Um, to do sort of standalone stuff and have some interesting routing and things like that. Um, but I might actually look into that. So if you could just cut your input, you know, basically switch your input from one track to the other. So that way, again, like your, your trail is still going off on one of your outputs. That might work. That might work. I don't know. We'll just, I, I might, I might have to make something like that. Um, Okay. Um, but okay, but to address your question, Justin Skinner, um, 
there, I don't think that you'll be able to do that with the plugins necessarily, like internally, like if you just had your um, standalone open, you could definitely do some workarounds in a DAW or in, like I said, the plugin wrapper where you can like make your own uh, routing and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if we're going to do that for the actual plugins. Sorry, man. Um, hopefully that helps though. Hopefully I gave you a workaround in which you could make that a reality uh, for yourself. Uh, anyway, so CW says, any plans on getting an Abbasi guitar? Once they stop selling out, I'm going to push for getting one for sure. I'd like one. I I would like one very much. I mean, I think I, I actually didn't get to really play one at the NAM show, if I remember correctly. I think we had one at the booth. I can hardly remember. That, that NAM show was just a blur, absolute blur. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to get one for sure. Jens, yes. Uh, Jen says, is this right? I found out that Doug Castro was the founder of Dark Glass uh, and then later the founder of Neural DSP uh, because both companies are credible in pushing the limits. What a genius. I totally agree. I, I can't tell you how grateful I am to be working for this man because he is... He's visionary. You know, he, he's, he, he's one of those people that when he walks into a room, everybody knows that he has it. Right? Like... Like you, like you, you, you I'm, I don't know if you guys have like, like really experienced this uh, before. Like, I mean, maybe like, you know, so like you go to a, like a NAM show, right? And then you see somebody walk past and they have like that charisma, that X factor, that presence to them just by walking. Like he's one of those dudes. Like, like the first time I got to meet him was at the NAM show. And I was like, dude, like he's, he's, like I said, I'm, I'm super grateful to be working with him, um, and this company, like it, it's, it's one of the best things that I could have ever asked for. <laughs> Vilka says, uh, just putting it out there would really love a neural plugin of the upcoming evil pumpkin from Fortin. I totally agree. The, the, that would be, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know if it's in pro in progress or not. Um, and again, I couldn't really say so if it was um but i hope so so vincent uh is asking sort of a, a tangential question to the dark glass and neural dsp thing it says random question but i think you'd know the answer is dark glass a parent company to neural dsp no they are separate companies even though doug is a, like is is in both of those companies they are separate from each other. There is some overlay between, you know, um, resources and personnel. Like some of the people from Dark Glass work with Neural DSP. Some of the people with Neural DSP work with Dark Glass. Um, we shared a booth with them at the NAM show. Um, yeah, really good people. Really, really good people. But, uh, but no, they are separate. <laughs> for sure he says you're basically describing the rock when i was talking about that that it factor yeah no i i could definitely see the rock being a uh mm, a crowd stopper um yeah dude jen says i love the fact because dark glass was a game changer for so many bassists and the uh the put out neural dsp with great guitar tones and effects that's really visionary i totally agree i absolutely agree um yeah all right yeah yeah vincent says so they are closely related but not directly connected then yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. not 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 directly related to each other um but yeah closely related so <laughs> archetype dwayne johnson lear says dude that'd be that'd be dope it would just be like it would just like scream motivational speeches at you whenever you play through it. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would love to see that. I might make a joke video about that at some point. I don't know. We'll see. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and, and start wrapping it up here. Um, yeah, Vincent says archetype Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson would break the world as we know it. I uh, wholeheartedly agree. 
Andre, it's all good, man. It's all good. He says, people let Steve go to sleep. Oh, man. I, I, I truly do. I truly do uh, enjoy this. I truly do. The only thing that I don't enjoy right now is the heat. Like, I'm starting to, like, sweat through my shirt right now, and it's feeling really, uh, <laughs> it's feeling pretty awful. Nice. Uh, Dan says they figured out our April Fool's. Yeah, D Dan is the head of marketing at the company. No worries, Vincent. He says, I'm going to head out. Peace, man. Thanks for the input. It's my pleasure, dude. Nice. I said, I just messed around with feedback routing in Reaper and fed a bossy's output back into its input. Uh, there's my Thursday. Nice, dude. If you guys, and honestly, if you guys make stuff with any of the presets I'm going to post up in the uh, the user, uh, user group, tag me in it. I want to see what you guys are making. Uh, Kevin says, where are you? Oh, I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, North Hollywood, which is... Uh, it's it's basically a frying pan. Like if you've ever been to North Hollywood, like that whole like the whole valley is just like a frying pan. So like North Hollywood gets very very hot in the summers, um, and I don't run the AC when I'm doing live streaming because I don't want that sound getting into it. So, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and wrap this up here. Uh, man, this was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed this, and I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, I think hopefully what I'm going to do, what I really want to do actually is uh, is do this like on a monthly or bi-monthly basis where I just go through and just see what I can make on these uh, these plugins. So again, if you, if you guys if you guys like this stuff, you know, like, share, subscribe, like, you know, show me that you guys are enjoying this and I will do more of it. Like that feedback is very, very important to me because then I get to know what you guys are feeling about what I'm putting out. Because again, it's like, I, I, I want to make sure that you guys are enjoying what's happening. So yeah. And again, if you do make some stuff with what's, uh, if you guys do make some stuff with the, with the presets, tag me in, tag me in the Facebook group. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Dan, thank you. Love you guys. This was so much fun. Um, and yeah, definitely look forward to me doing a lot more of these because this was this was a ton of fun. Awesome. So, and with that, as always, I'll catch you all in the next video.